Hey, so I make motion graphics and there's always like a billion little things that make them cool. I picked out three tricks that I'm using quite a bit that make my animations look really cool. So first I'm gonna show you how to take a collection of objects and randomize them on a surface so you can have some control over where they go. Then I'm gonna teach you how to create camera shake and not only that, but actually loop the camera shake animation so you can add it to your looping animations. And on the last one, I'm gonna show you a really cool trick that these two animations have in common. Let's get into it. All right, so go ahead and start with a collection of objects. It can be literally anything. If you don't have anything, just throw in uh, some of Blender's primitives. I'm gonna start with these little puck looking things and go ahead and highlight them, hit M, add a new collection, just call it, I'm gonna call it pucks. You can call it whatever you want. Move them out of the way. And what we're gonna do is we'll just set this up from scratch. I'm gonna add a plane and we're gonna go over and create a new geometry nodes workspace. So we're gonna get new and let's get a grid. You know, size, it will say size of 10 vertices of 50. Then we'll get a instance on points. And this is where we get to start making this. So what you can do up here in the outliner is just pull the entire pucks collection or whatever collection you have and plug it straight into instances. Now you'll notice, we'll go ahead and turn on separate and reset children. And you'll notice they're all here, but here is the problem that what I'm about to show you fixes. They are all on top of each other, all five objects. So you can go ahead and click on pick instance um, and it does it, it kind of picks it for you, but this gives you absolutely no control. So how can you control it? We're gonna control it in two ways, with randomness and with textures. Now the first one is the easiest. You can do a, a random value node and then switch this guy over to integer and plug him right into instance index and that will randomly place them. And, and that is the quickest way to do it. And this is a way I showed it on a three part series I just put on Patreon where I used this process to create this really cool countdown animation. There's a lot of really cool parts to this. If you wanna learn that, that is in the description for tier two and tier three members along with a whole bunch of other really cool motion graphics stuff on my Patreon. So feel free to check that out. Now, this is the first and easiest way to randomize a collection of objects on something. But you can also use uh, textures, which is super cool. So what you can do is I'm gonna go and get a noise texture. I'm gonna plug that into instance index. It's not gonna do anything. So what we need to do here is get a map range and do a little bit of setup. And I'm gonna give this one negative one on the min uh, and positive one, and then you can get a vector math node to kind of accentuate that if you set this up to multiply. So if I bring this up, you'll start to see that noise texture actually start to affect this plane. Then I'll make, maybe bring my detail down and then this is when you can actually start to recognize the, uh, the pattern actually showing up. So look at this. Now we have this noise pattern showing up in this scene and it looks really awesome. If I kind of play with my uh, my uh, map range here, there we go. You can actually recognize the noise texture on this in the way that it's randomizing. So it's super cool. Now, if you want another bit of context of like, hey, when can you use this? I created this animation with the same thing, had a sphere and uh, had the numbers as a collection. And then I was able to put the numbers on that thing randomly with this process. And then I also, on this project file, I created a volume and then put instances within the volume. And then again, used those numbers to instance in there and it randomly picked which numbers I wanted to put in this animation. Um, all those project files are on Patreon, by the way. Um, but this is a very powerful trick to add to your motion graphics if you need to randomize a bunch of different objects. It's very powerful and you can make a hundred things with it. All right, now let's create some camera shake and also loop the camera shake animation, which is super valuable. So in the description, there's a free project file for you to download this if you wanna follow along with what I'm doing, or you can just watch and uh, remember it. Uh, but this is just a standard animation where I have all of these guys as instances, and you can see the camera is flying through all of these instances. So I wanna add some camera shake to make this more interesting. So it's not just like perfectly going in, it makes it feel a little bit more organic. So what I'll do is I'll hit the back row to frame zero, and then I'll click on my camera. And right up in here, I'm gonna go ahead and just add a keyframe on all of them. That's all we need to do. And then we can go over here to the animation uh, tab and this will have it set up for us. So we need to be in the graph editor where you can see the X, Y, and Z Euler rotation so we can access those keyframes. Let's pick the X Euler rotation, then go to the modifiers tab right here and add in a noise. And the noise 
is going to add camera shake. Um, but we need to kind of hone it in. So first on our strength, we'll do like 0.3 on the strength. And then on the scale, we'll do like 10. And there we go. It's a little bit more manageable. Uh, the strength, maybe 0.2. And then the scale, maybe 12. So now we have this. But notice something. Once we get to the end of the animation, I'll kind of scroll over and watch. Oh, you can kind of tell it's not seamless. We'll go back again. You see that? It kind of has a jolt. How do we fix that? Well, we're just going to ramp it in and ramp it out and it will be completely unnoticeable. So what you'll do is click on your restrict frame range and I know down here I have 500 frames. So if I go start at frame one and at frame 500, and then because I've done this enough, but we can visualize it here, I'm gonna do my blend in. See how it blends that animation in? It doesn't just start, it actually goes from zero uh, on the noise and it goes into the noise. Now for me, 30 looks really good. So I'll do 30 on the in and 30 on the out. And now if we go to the end of the timeline, we can see it shaking around and then it kind of evens out and then we go into the rest of the animation and it does it perfectly. And you can do that on all axes. So if I take the uh, Y Euler rotation, add in a noise and now it's gonna be doing that. So again, scale of 10, a strength of say 0.3, and maybe of course that's crazy, 0.1, and then restrict frame range, start one, end 500, and then we'll just double click on these and do 30. And now we have a seamless camera shake animation um, with uh, you know whatever you want it to do. Now this camera shakes a little bit too much, I'll make it more minimal, but that is how you do it. Now I mentioned these two animations have one very significant thing in common. That is all those objects that are moving are moving on a uh, curve to get them to actually move in that way. And let me show you how to set that up. So if I hit shift A, we can go ahead and get in a, uh, we'll get an icosphere and we'll bring, uh, we'll bring the subdivisions down. I just want you to be able to see that this object is rotating. It'll dig into the geometry once we do it, but you'll get the idea. So now we have this, I'm also gonna hit Shift A and we're gonna go ahead and get in a path. And I'm gonna go ahead and say hit S5. I want it to be much bigger. And then you can right click and you have these guys right here. See this? If I click that guy and I hit G, you can move that around. So what I can do is take this guy, go here to my constraints, add a constraint, a follow path, and then you could select the path there and then he can move. So here's the value in that. You can click on this guy and I'm going to go, hey, I'm going to go and subdivide it twice and then I'm going to select every other vertice and I'm holding down shift so that I can select multiple and then you can bring it up. Now we have this wavy thing and then he is going up and down. How great is this? And then you could just, you know, then you could just keyframe that. So I'll start the keyframe here and then we'll go to the very end and I'll go 100, which will bring him not where I wanted him to go. So let's see, negative 100. So negative, and then add that keyframe. And so now he's going around and this is super cool. And then you can take this a little bit further and uh, you can hit shift D, get a new one. And you could say, all right, well, let's give it a little bit of geometry like that. And then we can go and add a uh, solidify, bring that over. And then you can bring this over. And then what I can do is select this path that's holding the uh, this object here, and he's going around. And then all you have to do is animate the rotation. And if you wanna learn all of this, you can take this animation and animate it so it looks. Now you can learn that. I'm gonna link this tutorial in the description if you wanna learn it from, from scratch to start, how to make that, that is linked in the description as well. And there's this animation as well that I use this exact process with all these objects on the curves. There's some really cool opportunities for animation with this process. So there you go. That is three really cool tricks that I use in my motion graphics quite a bit to make some really cool things. Again, if you wanna learn how to create that animation that I mentioned on Patreon, that is linked in the description. Three parts, really cool stuff. It really helps support my work. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next one.